Hi everyone, welcome back to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ilopathology.com. In my earlier session, I had discussed about a very important form of cell death called necroptosis. Today we will learn another form of cell death which is pyroptosis. So we will look into the definition, we will look into the mechanism of pyroptosis and then we will see how pyroptosis helps us in various conditions. So what is pyroptosis? Pyre means fire, right? So pyroptosis is also referred to as a fiery death which is a lytic form of cell death but programmed cell death, okay? So lytic form of cell death which is inflammatory yet it is programmed cell death that's why it's called pyroptosis the key output of pyroptosis is release of interleukin 1 beta this interleukin 1 beta is an inflammatory cytokine which results in fever and leukocyte recruitment we know that pyro means fever that's why it is pyroptosis and the execution of pyroptosis is by gas dermins gsdmd and these gas dermins are pore forming proteins. If you remember these terminologies, gas germins and interleukin 1 beta, that is all about pyroptosis. So, we will see pyroptosis is activated by two important pathways or there are two different pathways for pyroptosis. One is called canonical pathway, another is non-canonical pathway. So, what is this canonical pathway? Basically, there is a formation of inflammasome releasing caspase 1 or activating caspase 1, whereas non-canonical pathway is the intracellular lipopolysaccharide activates caspase number 4 and caspase number 5. Both of these pathways converge together to activate this gas dermin D, okay, GSDMD cleavage which results in the formation of pores in the cell membrane and because of the formation of pore, the cell dies. This is the mechanism of pyroptosis, canonical pathway, non-canonical pathway converging together to activate the gas dermin leading on to the formation of pores in the plasma membrane resulting in cell death, right? So that's about pyroptosis mechanisms. So let us look into what is this canonical pathway and what is that non-canonical pathway. To begin with, let's talk about canonical pathway. In the first step of canonical pathway is the sensor activation. Uh, remember that I have shown NLRP3, which means nod-like receptor family, pyrin domaining containing, that stands for NLRP3. So what really happens is that the microbial proteins DAMP and PAMP, you know, they sit on the receptor. NLRP3 in the cytoplasm will be in the monomer form, okay. Once this is activated, it oligomerizes to form an inflammasome. That is the next step of pyroptosis, okay. There is a formation or assembly of inflammasome and once the inflammasome is formed, it activates caspase 1. Now, what is this caspase 1? Caspase 1 is also referred to as interleukin 1 beta converting enzyme. Why it is called interleukin 1 beta converting enzyme? Because it activates pro interleukin 1 beta into interleukin 1 beta or activated interleukin 1 beta. Another important function of the caspase 1 in pyroptosis is it activates or cleaves the gas dermin D. We know that interleukin 1 beta is responsible for recruitment of leukocytes. It is responsible for fever. Now, once the gas dermin is formed, what really happens is that it goes and attaches to the plasma membrane resulting in the formation of pores. So, there is pore formation at the plasma membrane and because of the formation of pore, the interleukin 1 beta which is activated or which is synthesized, it comes out of these pores and also this pore formation results in disruption of the osmotic potential leading on to pyroptotic bodies. Remember, we know about apoptotic bodies, right? Similarly, even in pyroptosis, because of the disruption of plasma membrane, you find these bodies are the blebs on the cytoplasmic membrane which are now known as pyroptotic bodies. Ultimately, there is membrane rupture leading on to cell death. Okay, this is canonical pathway of pyroptosis. Now moving on to non-canonical pathway of pyroptosis where the lipopolysaccharide of the bacteria once they come inside okay intracellular 
lipopolysaccharide once it is there in the cytoplasm it activates procaspase 4 or procaspase 5 into active form of caspases caspase 4 and caspase 5 this activated caspase 4 and caspase 5 further activates or cleaves the gas germ in D which results in the formation of pore and we know once the pores are formed it either releases the interleukin 1 beta outside or it causes pyroptotic bodies leading on to membrane blebs and finally membrane rupture leading on to cell death. So basically what you have to understand is that the canonical pathway and the non-canonical pathway converges into something called activation or cleavage of the gas germ in B forming the pores in the plasma membrane. Right Now what is the role of pyroptosis? Pyroptosis has two important roles, one in the host defense, another is excess activation. First is host defense where the pyroptosis kills the infected cells. By killing the infected cells, it limits pathogen replication. Second important one is excessive activation resulting in, in conditions like sepsis or in conditions like auto-inflammatory or autoimmune disease flares. So this is where pyroptosis comes into picture. Now let us see once we have learnt about these things, last session we have learnt about necroptosis, we have earlier learnt about apoptosis. Now let us see what are the differences between apoptosis, pyroptosis and necroptosis. Initially, apoptosis we all know it is because of activation of caspases 8 or 9. Pyroptosis we have seen that it is because of activation of caspase 1 or caspase 4 or caspase 5. Ultimately, there is resultant cleavage of gas germ in D, right? Whereas necroptosis, it is because of two important kinases, RIPK1 and RIPK3. The membrane in case of apoptosis is very much intact. So that is how it differentiates from necrosis, right? The membrane is not damaged and the apoptotic bodies are phagocytosed by the various macrophages. Whereas both pyroptosis and necroptosis membranes are damaged. The mechanism of damage is different. In case of pyroptosis, it's because of the gas dermine induced pore formation. In case of necroptosis, it's because of MLKL induced pore formation, right? That's the difference between pyroptosis and necroptosis. Inflammation is absolutely minimal in case of apoptosis. That is how it differentiates from necrosis as well. Whereas inflammation is both high in both necroptosis and pyroptosis because the plasma membrane is damaged. The intracellular contents leak out of the plasma membrane eliciting inflammatory reactions because lots and lots of cytokines are also released leading on to inflammatory response. Pyroptosis, we know that there is release of interleukin 1 beta or even interleukin 18 whereas in the case of necroptosis, it's because of DAMPs, right? So that is how the differences between apoptosis and pyroptosis and necroptosis. Apoptosis, no inflammation whereas the other two has lots of inflammatory response though all these three are forms of programmed cell death okay so remember just because somebody asks you what is programmed cell death don't tell only apoptosis it can be pyroptosis it can be necroptosis only difference among these three is this apoptosis do not elicit inflammatory reaction whereas the other two elicit inflammatory reaction because there is membrane damage in the formation of pores leading on to inflammatory response. So that is all about pyroptosis. Thank you for watching.